Okay, here I'm going to do another example of using variation of parameters to solve a second order differential equation. And again, there was the basic procedure that we use, and I'll refer back to that. So here we're going to solve the differential equation y double prime plus y equals 1 over x plus 1. So in this example, I'm not, we're not given that fundamental set of solutions right off the bat. So we have to find a fundamental set of solutions to y double prime plus y equals 0. But for this type of differential equation, uh, it's known that a solution of the form, a solution of the form y equals e to the r times x uh, exists. So we can simply substitute that in. And notice if we take a second, if the first derivative, right, we'll just get r times e to the rx. And the second derivative, we'll get r squared times e to the rx. So if we substitute that in, we've got r squared times e to the rx plus e to the rx equals 0. So we can simply factor out the e to the rx. That leaves us with r squared plus 1 equals 0. Um, e to any power never equals 0, so that tells us that r squared plus 1 would have to equal 0. And if we solve that, we'll get r squared equals negative 1. Or when we take the square root, we'll get that r equals positive and, positive and negative i. So what this tells us is that our fundamental set of solutions, it tells us that cosine of x and sine of x form a fundamental set of solutions. Okay, so this is all sort of uh, stuff that you would see prior to variation of parameters. I definitely have videos talking about this stuff somewhere. So I'm not going to rehash all of it and go into every little uh, every little bit about where this comes from. So if this is all a mystery to you, um, definitely check out my other videos, the other differential equation videos, because I hit on this stuff. Okay, so uh, now we're kind of at the situation where we were in the previous example. We've got our fundamental set of solutions. So now we simply have to solve that system of equations. We're going to have to solve our system of equations and find our, our, our other solution. So in this case, again, we've got v1 prime times one of our fundamental solutions here, uh, cosine x, plus v2 prime times sine of x. We're going to set that equal to 0. And then we look at v1 prime. We take the derivative of cosine. Well, that's just negative sine x. Plus v2 prime. The derivative of cosine, excuse me, the derivative of sine is cosine x. And we set that equal to our function f of x, which is 1 over x plus 1. So now this is the system of equations that we're going to have to solve. Okay, so... This one, I don't think, you know, I definitely am not going to solve this one using substitution. What I did was I took my first equation here and I multiplied, so multiply both sides by cosine of x. So that gives me v1 prime times cosine squared x plus v2 prime times, well, we would have cosine x times sine x equals 0. And then I'm going to take my second equation and I'm going to multiply both sides. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative sine x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the terms involving v2 prime to cancel out. That's why I'm doing this. So if we multiply the left side by negative uh, sine x, that's going to give us v1 prime times sine squared x. And then we'll have negative v2 prime times cosine x times sine x. We have to multiply the right side as well by negative sine x. So we'll have negative sine x divided by x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is just use elimination by addition. So if we add these together, we'll have v1 prime times cosine squared plus v1 prime times sine squared of x. Notice our 
V, the, the, again, the terms involving V2 prime are going to cancel. That's why, we, again, we did this. So on the right side, we'll still be left with negative sine x divided by x plus 1. Okay, well, we can factor V1 prime out, but then we're just left with cosine squared plus sine squared. And well, cosine squared plus sine squared, we know that our good old favorite trig identity, uh, that just equals 1. So immediately we have that V1 prime equals negative sine x divided by x plus 1. Okay, so now we have to go back and we have to figure out V2 prime. We have to figure out our V2 prime, and I'm just going to use the very first equation to solve for, to solve for V2 prime. So again, V1 prime, it says that's negative sine x over x plus 1. We would multiply that by cosine x plus V2 prime times sine x equals 0. So let's see here. Uh, again, not too bad here. So we can add the first term over. So we'll have positive sine x times cosine x over x plus 1. On the left side, we still have v2 prime times sine x. And if we divide both sides by sine x, it's just going to cancel it out. And we'll have that v2 prime is equal to cosine x over somehow my... Okay, excuse me. Um, so still have x plus 1. I think I... Okay, so, all right, everything looks good. There was one thing I was worried about for a second, and uh, but everything looks perfect. Okay, so we've now got that v2 prime equals cosine x over x plus 1. And we said likewise that v1 prime was equal to negative sine x divided by x plus 1. Okay, so at this point, you know, in the previous example, we just calculated a, the antiderivative of both sides. But these functions don't have, uh, they don't have, we'll say, nice antiderivatives. They don't have elementary antiderivatives. You can try to integrate these and knock yourself out. Um, I think you'll find that it doesn't work very well. So in this case, what we do is we're going to express our solutions in terms of definite integrals. Okay, so v1 prime is negative sine x over x plus 1. Since we can't calculate a nice antiderivative, what we do, so you can imagine integrating both sides, We've got v1 on the left if we calculate an antiderivative. Well, we're going to calculate an antiderivative on the right as well. It's just, unfortunately, we can't do it. So we express this as a definite integral. So we'll have negative sine. I'm going to use x bar. So x bar is just a dummy variable. Okay, it's just you could use t or v or whatever you want to. So x bar is just a dummy variable. Divided by x bar plus 1, we would be integrating with respect to that dummy variable. But now I'm going to use a definite integral from 0 to x. If you were somehow able to calculate this, uh, um, you know, this antiderivative, that would be the correct antiderivative. But in this case, we simply can't do it. The same thing to get v2. We'll just express this as a definite integral, so from 0 to x, cosine of x bar over x bar plus 1. Uh, and again, we're integrating with respect to x bar, that new dummy variable. So now we've got everything we need. We can express our general solution. Okay, so we said using this formula at the bottom that gives us our particular solution. But I'm just going to go ahead and write the general solution out. So to get the general solution, to get our general solution, we simply take our particular solution. 
Okay, so again, to get our particular solution, I'm going to use this formula at the bottom. So we'll take V1 times Y1 plus V2 times Y2. So in this case, we're going to have negative, bring it all back, so many pieces of paper here. So we said V1, that's going to be negative. Um, I just factored the negative out front. So from 0 to X, we have sine of X bar over X bar plus 1. Our integrating with respect to uh, this, this dummy variable. Again, we multiply that by our fundamental, one of our solutions from the fundamental set. In this case, it would be cosine of x, the way we labeled them. And then we would have from 0 to x of our other solution, which was cosine of x bar over x bar plus 1. And that's all going to be multiplied by our other solution from our fundamental set, which is sine x. So this would be our particular solution right now, this, the particular solution using the formula. So to get the general solution, again, we just look at, we take some generic coefficient, c1, multiply that by the function from our fundamental set, and then we add to that c2, we multiply the other function from our fundamental set. And now we have our solution. So again, I think in the first video, I definitely touched on you know the point. I, I made a point to point out that uh, you can't always find nice, clean antiderivatives. So here's a case where you can't find a nice, clean antiderivative. So I wanted to point out what you do in this case. And what you do is you just simply express them in terms of a definite integral. Hey, that's what we've done. Perfectly valid. Nothing wrong with that. So again, we now have our solution.